Diastasis recti abdominis is essentially separation of the rectus abdominis. Your abs, there is always some amount of separation, but too much can be a problem. Most pregnant women and many postpartum women experience DRA, which has been linked to low back pain, pelvic floor issues like incontinence and prolapse. Men can experience this as well, but chances are you haven't even heard of this until getting pregnant, and many pregnant women don't even know that it's a thing. Fortunately, you can prevent diastasis recti and even heal it. Unfortunately, the standard advice on how to do this is not evidence-based. If you Google diastasis recti exercises, virtually every single source will tell you to stay away from crunches, sit-ups, planks, anything that puts pressure on the front wall of your core, your abs. Even WebMD promotes this, going so far as recommending nothing on your hands and knees, presumably even cat-cow is, is not okay, is too risky. And we see the same problem on YouTube. My favorite source by far for prenatal workouts is Body Fit by Amy, but even she constantly harps on staying away from crunches, planks during the second and third trimesters and postpartum. And we want to make sure that we're not doing any of our traditional crunches or bicycles or even planks or anything in that plank or push-up position. Now listen, I know some of you might be strong enough to be doing planks, but if you don't know about diastasis recti, which is ab separation, very common in pregnancy. A lot of people don't even know they have it during or after. I even in some of my older prenatal videos would do some incline planks and push-ups. I would highly advise that once you get to that second trimester, you don't do anything in that plank position. Side planks are great. We're going to do a few of those, but anything that's putting downward pressure. I've mostly stuck to these guidelines during my previous two pregnancies because they're the only guidelines I ever saw. I was a, a little wary too because whenever I tried to find the source for any of these recommendations, there was none. No one seemed to really link to any. And then when I did find studies on my own, uh, results were mixed and definitely did not support the no crunches dogma. Like this randomized controlled trial published in 2019, 40 postpartum women with diastasis recti were put into one of two groups. Group A, that involved traditional ab exercises like reverse sit-ups and oblique twists, plus some deep core stability moves, including planks. Group B only did the traditional ab exercises. Both groups saw substantial reductions in their gap, in their diastasis recti gap, with group A, the deep core group, seeing it, an even larger reduction. So it looks like the extra deep core work, the transverse abdominus focused moves, helped even further. But remember, this group was still doing the traditional ab exercises. They were still doing sit-ups and twists, which supposedly are a huge no-no for diastasis recti uh, healing or, and prevention. And also the deep core moves included planks. Again, supposedly a huge no-no. The only thing we can take away from this RCT is that doing moves targeting the transverse abdominis is helpful. Not that doing crunches and planks is harmful or doing anything on your hands and knees is harmful. Clearly both groups saw huge improvements while doing these exercises. Also the recommendation to draw in or suck in your abs or press them to the floor, I believe it originates from Pilates and unfortunately has invaded virtually every fitness realm. Not only is it likely bad for low back pain, as I've talked about in a previous video, but it doesn't appear to be a good idea for pregnant and postpartum women either. Simply drawing in the belly toward the spine can increase pressure down the midline of the abdominals, widening the interrecti distance, also called the gap. In fact, many studies published in the past few years have reached the same conclusion. The drawing in maneuver adds to the strain, resulting in increased IRD, while the curl up closes the gap. That quote comes from the NASM and is literally the only source I found actually referencing studies when talking about DRA and those studies counter the conventional wisdom. 
They point out the usefulness of crunches for pregnant and postpartum women when done correctly when the transverse abdominis is engaged. You want to prevent any doming when performing the move, any move. If you can't, if you aren't strong enough, probably stay away from that move until you are. They also include several exercises, including crunches and planks to prevent DR on a ball since it's generally not recommended to lie flat second and third trimester. Like many conditions, diastasis recti is easier to prevent than to reverse. Allowing core muscles to atrophy for nine months and then followed by several months postpartum increases the chances of muscles separating under the strain of pregnancy and delivery. The conflicting advice does women a disservice because maintaining a strong core and healthy weight with exercise before, during, and after pregnancy is undoubtedly the best method to avoid DRA which is basically what I did during my first and second pregnancies. I did nothing or virtually nothing, relying on very, very basic, very easy <laughs> core exercises, like some of the stuff Body Fit by Amy recommends. They're a great starting point if you're just getting into exercise, whether you're pregnant or not. But for those of us who exercise regularly, it's, it's basically like doing nothing. It's just very easy. Luckily, I didn't seem to have any additional separation postpartum and really during much of my pregnancy. I can't know for sure because I didn't have any formal diagnosis. No one has ever talked to me about DR. I just learned about it on my own. Medical professionals don't seem to take it seriously. They don't seem to prioritize it. The priority is definitely the baby, right? The baby is the priority, not us moms. At least here in the U.S., probably why we don't have any postpartum care until six weeks after we give birth. And many hospitals will fight you on taking your baby to the nursery so you can get some goddamn sleep. Point is, I probably had a nice advantage given I worked out prior to pregnancy and regularly did core specific movements. Even now, well into my second trimester with my third baby, I don't have any additional separation. Or maybe I'm just genetically very lucky. It could be that. Regardless, one of the risk factors for DRA is multiple pregnancies, and given this is now my third pregnancy, I'm not taking any chances. I'm regularly doing exercises I did prior to pregnancy, just with some modifications. Modified crunches, bird dog, cat cow, planks, side planks, push-ups and bridges while monitoring my core for any doming effect or just when something feels like it's it's too hard. Like planks on my feet now, uh, no, does not feel good. And I still do everything on my back, lying on my back for short periods of time doesn't bother me yet, but I'm sure I'll be using a stability ball pretty soon. I wanted to share this because my audience is mostly women. Many of you are pregnant or considering pregnancy. And if you've you know, consider DR prevention at all, chances are the advice you get is not evidence-based. It's just kind of word of mouth and what sounds right, which just sucks. You know, I always say to rely on experts, specifically consensus, and 99% of the time, that's right. <laughs> you get the right answer or very close to it. But as with anything, there are uh, anomalies, there are exceptions, and it looks like diastasis recti, prevention and reversal is a big exception. Low back pain prevention and treatment also a big exception. When can you know when to listen to consensus, when to listen to experts, and when not to? I mean, I don't think there's any, just, there's no formula to follow, but a really good rule of thumb, at least for me, is lack of sources. Again, that's what just really confused me when it came to the diastasis recti stuff and had me searching for more answers, particularly with this pregnancy because I was more worried about it. Um, again, none of the sources I read linked to anything. It just seemed to be, well, it makes sense that crunches would be unsafe because of the pressure on the front wall. So yeah, don't do them. <laughs> That's just not good enough for me. Sometimes it's just that something sounds idiotic. <laughs> a really good example is back when Fauci and others were saying, don't worry about masks. It's, it's not necessary. And myself and others were like, that is so stupid. No. <laughs> and so we were wearing, we were wearing masks to stores back in February, early March, 2020. Of course, what sounds 
idiotic to me might sound perfectly reasonable to someone else, right? Like vaccines being safe and effective sounds idiotic to some people, but vaccines changing your DNA <laughs> sounds totally reasonable. <laughs> I guess you have to know your limitations, right? Like I'm, I'm fairly comfortable, fairly confident when it comes to sourcing information, understanding information in terms of like health, nutrition, fitness stuff. But you can tell me virtually anything you want about astronomy and I will probably believe you. I'm not going to go searching for the, the truth. I don't even know. What's a space term? Black holes. I'm not going to go searching for the truth about black holes because what, where do I even, what the fuck even is a black hole? I don't know. <laughs> and if you think vaccines have any ability whatsoever to alter your DNA, you are in that position when it comes to immunology, infectious disease. You don't even know what those words mean. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to become a fuck anti-vaxxers thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What was the point of this? The point is just stick to consensus unless you have a really good reason not to. And you probably don't have a really good reason not to. So just stick to consensus. I know that's really patronizing, but you're probably too dumb to understand whatever it is you're trying to understand. So just stop. Black holes. How do they work? Which is actually a fair question. I mean, fucking magnets. How do they work? I don't know. Fair question. That's like the only SNL skit I like where I thought they took it to an even like higher level. And they were like, how are pants different from shirts? Like what's with islands? Get more land. What's with deserts? Get less sand. Anyway, that's the video. Uh, I hope that was okay. I hope that wasn't too much ranting. And really, I don't mean to be patronizing. It's, it's a tough thing to say, yeah, listen to consists but sometimes it's fucking wrong <laughs> and you're probably not smart enough to know when that is i'm sure there's i'm sure there's stuff that i'm like oh yeah i'll listen to the experts and they're wrong i mean that's just it's just life but again 99 percent of the time that's the way to go anyway thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it if you did give a like so many burps is just is bleh. why <laughs> why does privacy make me burp so much i mean i always burp but it's oh it's a whole it's a whole nother level uh subscribe what uh, what what's another thing i don't know the bell if you want to be notified when i upload patrons of course thank you so much to my patrons at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan you can support me there if you like i do upload two exclusive videos there a month for five dollar plus patrons and i have shirts amazon store page i think that's it thank you so much guys new video soon oh running out of breath <laughs> oh man the pimple <laughs> I put benzoyl peroxide on it just like once a day and that shit works because it just dried up to nothing. I didn't get to pop anything. I like, I'm not complaining. It's good. I don't need something really unsightly on my face, particularly when I make videos, but I wasn't really looking forward to popping it. Oh, conundrum.